So earlier today, Serif released version 2.4 of Affinity Designer, and with it comes various new tools and features, a few of which we'll be going over in this video. The first major tool that was introduced is the new States menu, so let's jump right in and have a look at that. So I'm going to open up the States menu by coming up here to the Window menu and looking for States. And it should open over here as a floating menu. If it opens as a dockable menu, just pull it out of the tab here. It's a lot easier to work with that way. Now, within the States menu, we have two different types of states we can work with. We have queries and we have captured states. And then down here, we have the scope, which allows us to determine whether we want these changes to be applied to the entire document, just a specific artboard, or just a specific selection. Now, for this demonstration, I'm going to leave everything at document. And the way this works is states basically allows you to toggle the visibility of multiple layers without having to go and toggle them one by one. And a good example of this would be this document layout I have here. These are all letterhead designs that I've put together and I give away as templates. And within these templates, I just have some blank placeholder information. Let's say I wanted to toggle off the visibility of the placeholder information so we can see how the blank templates look. Normally, I would have to go through and manually disable the visibility of each individual text layer. But with the States menu, we can do this much quicker. So I'm going to create a new query to do this. I'm going to come over here to this icon where it says Add New Query. And I'm going to create a name for this query. So for this query, I'm going to toggle off the visibility of all text items. So I'm going to name this one Text, and I'll click OK. And now we have a text query added to our query index. And if I click on this arrow to expand, we have all of these options. Now let me expand this menu. I'm going to click and drag this down so I can see everything in here. These are all of the parameters in which we can choose to toggle the visibility of an object. So we have layer tags, layer types, layer name, lock status, and show hide status. Uh, since I want to disable the visibility of text objects, I'm going to choose layer type, and I'm going to choose to toggle art text and frame text. And now I'm going to minimize this. And over here, we have these three icons. If I now click on this uh, hide icon, you can see it hides all of the text items on the screen. They're no longer visible. And I can put that back on by just clicking the show icon. And now the text items are back. And we also have a select icon over here. If I click on that, it'll select all of the text items. And then to deselect them, I could just press the escape key. So that's how that works. Let me set up another query now to disable the visibility of all of the icons and logos. So I'm going to add a new query, and I'm going to name this one Icons. And I'll click OK. And the parameters I'll set for this one, this time I'll go by Layer Type, and now I'm going to choose Grouped Objects, because I have my document set up so that all of my icons and logos are grouped objects. So now when I toggle off the visibility of this query, you can see the icons are now gone. And I can toggle off the visibility of the text, and now the text is gone. And if I want to put that back, and this is applied to the entire document, as you can see here. And if I want to put that back on, I could just click the visibility icons again. And now everything's showing. So now let's have a look at how Captured States works. Captured States allows you to create new visibility profiles based on combinations of queries. So I'm going to create a new captured state by clicking on this icon down here, and I'm going to name this one Everything. And it's going to capture everything on my screen as it is right now in that state. Now this is the Everything state. Everything is visible. And now I'm going to create a new state for just a blank template. So let's say I want to turn off the visibility of the text and the icons so that we just have an entirely blank template here. I can create a new captured state out of this, and I can name this one blank and click OK. And now we have a blank captured state. And if I want to go back to my everything captured state, I just have to click on the play icon. And now it takes me back to that state where we have the combination of visibility that we set here in these queries. And if I want to go back to blank, I can choose that. And that's how that works. So I'm going to create one more captured state. This time I'm going to disable, uh, I'm going to disable just the text items. And I'll create a new captured state. And I'll name this one No Text. And click OK. And now we have a captured state based on those parameters there. And again, I can go through and cycle through these based on however I want. And you can also update the status of a captured state by clicking the Update icon at any time. So let's say, let me put my everything status back on. Let me say I want to change my blank template so that it shows, um, so that it shows, let me put this 
as it is. Let's say I want to update my blank template so that it shows only the text. I could turn on the visibility of the text, and now I can click the update icon, and now the blank template is redefined so that it shows the text items and not the icons. And if you want to delete everything, let me just put everything back on visibility. And if you want to delete everything, you can just use this delete icon down here to delete all of your captured states and all of your queries. And then when you're finished, you can just close out of the menu. And there you go. That's how you can use the new captured states feature in Affinity Designer. Another new feature that was added to Affinity Designer is the ability to export files in DXF and DWG file formats, which is useful for those of you who use various CAD applications. So let's have a closer look at how that works. Let's say I wanted to take this design right here and export this as a DXF file. What I would do is click on it to select it and then open up my export menu by coming up here to where it says File and going down to Export. From the file type dropdown, you should see that DXF and DWG are now options in this list. So I'll select DXF from this option here. And I want to choose to export the selection only. And it shows you a preview of here of what gets exported. And down here, you can set the properties of the DXF file that you'll be exporting. Because when you work with this file type, typically you're only exporting vector paths or just the outlines of the vector object. So things like adjustment layers and filters and all kinds of quick effects, those things aren't really going to transfer over to a DXF file. So Affinity Designer has these properties down here that allow you to dictate how these things are handled. So for example, if you have gradient fills, uh, often gradients don't translate very well over to CAD applications, so you can define how they are handled here. You can simplify it, replace it with the solid color, or just ignore it altogether. And if you need further clarification on what all of these parameters are, I'll have a link in the description of the video to this uh, release notes page that shows you all of the specific details here. Another new feature that was added to Affinity Designer is the ability to define your selection box. Now this is a minor update, but to me it's a big deal because this was always a pet peeve of mine of working with Affinity Designer. To show you what I mean, I have this object that I created right here, and in order to create this object, I had to rotate a shape. Now the way Affinity Designer works is when you rotate a shape, it doesn't just rotate the shape, it rotates the bounding box as well, or the selection box, which can be problematic because let's say I wanted to decrease the height of this box. There's no way for me to do that with it as it currently is. If I take this handle right here and I bring it down, it's distorting the object. It's not just decreasing the height. And the same thing over here. If I take this handle, we get this effect as well. So to remedy this, we normally have to cycle the selection box. So to do that with the object selected, I'll come up here to the select menu and I will go to cycle selection box. And now we have a regular rectangular uh, selection box and I can decrease, increase and decrease the height as I'd like to. Now the problem with the way this works in Affinity Designer is once I'm done making these changes and I click off of the object, I can click on it again and it's right back to where it was previously. So every time I touch this object, I have to manually cycle the selection box. Well, thanks to this new feature, we can now set, we can now reset the selection box. So let me set this as I like it. I'm gonna to go to select and I'm gonna choose cycle selection box. And now we can define this as the default selection box by going to select and choosing set selection box. And now that'll be the defined selection box so that every time I touch this object, it is updated with its new selection box. And the final new feature we'll be looking at in this video is another minor update, but to me it's a pretty big deal because it really enhances your workflow. And that's the ability to toggle between the selection tool and the anchor points tool by simply double clicking on an object. So if I zoom in on this letter right here, this is not a letter actually, this is a vector path that I converted to curves. If I double click this with the selection tool, it takes me into the anchor points tool and now I can edit the individual anchor points. That was always the case in Affinity Designer, but once you get into the direct selection tool or the anchor points tool, to get back to the selection tool, you'll either have to click on the tool or use the keyboard shortcut, which is the letter V. Now, thanks to this latest update, we don't have to do either of those things. We can simply double click on it again, and now we're back to the selection tool. Now, this is a really big improvement in terms of functionality because you can just toggle back and forth between those two tools without ease. Those are two of the most common tools in Affinity Designer and having the ability to cycle between them with ease is really helpful.
So that should do it for today's video. This wasn't really a major update. The main thing with this release was the new states feature, but some of the other new updates are welcomed additions as well. And if you wanna go over all of the updates that were made, again, I'll have a link in the description of the video to where you can see the official release notes. And if you wanna learn more about Affinity Designer, be sure to check out my Affinity Designer Masterclass. It's a collection of over 80 videos where I go over all of the tools and features in Affinity Designer and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work. We have a private community where you can ask questions and get help from me anytime you want. I'm in there every morning answering your questions and the course contents are now up to date as of this latest release. So I'll have some information about that down below if you wanna check that out. If you have any questions, just drop a comment below and as always, thanks for watching.